Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. Be with us, Lord, all day long. Let us live victorious life in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the flood begins. Flood begins. But before flood begins, let me read the last section, verse 16 of Genesis chapter 7. And they that went in, went in male and female, and male and female of all flesh as God had commanded. And Lord Jehovah shuts in its door. Hmm. I, I forgot to mention uh, yesterday that there is uh, two different names of God is mentioned here. When God's name is mentioned in the Old Testament about God telling Noah to bring all these beasts into the boat. The word was used Elohim, the powerful one. Elohim, El Shaddai, Elohim. But when it talks about one who's shutting the door, the Lord, Jehovah, the covenant God, is the one who brings them to safety. So pulpit commentary makes this wonderful remark. Shut him in, literally shut behind him, i.e. close up the door of the ark after him, doubtless miraculous to preserve him from both the violence of the waters and the rage of men. The contrast between the two names of the deity is here is most vividly present. It is Elohim who commanded him about the beast. It is Jehovah the covenant God who ensures his safety by closing the ark behind him. What would have happened when the water reaches? Hmm. All the people, the vicious people, evil people, who did turn and repent before God for 100 years will try to break into the boat and thereby destroying everyone. So Jehovah, the covenant God, shuts the door. And the flood now happens. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. The young literal translation says, and the deluge is 40 days. I didn't know deluge was flood. Deluge was in 40 days. The waters arose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to depth of more than 15, 15 cubits. What's 15 cubits? 20 feet above. So, wow. Remember, the boat was sitting on top of the mountain. The water increased so rapidly, right? And the currents taking people, the storm, the thunder, the wave, um, the increase of the water was violent. And it reached the mountain top and it took off 20 feet from the top of the mountain, there's 20 feet more water, which means everything will die. Right? Um, Kill and Dilich, uh, the biblical commentary, Dilich, I think it's German, writes the following The description is simple and majestic. The almighty judgment of God and the love manifest in midst of the wrath holds the historian fast. Ooh. The tautologies depict the fearful monotony of the immeasurable expanse of water. Huh. I wouldn't use the word majestic, but uh, in all commentary, basically, thought it was majestic act of God to kill everyone, destroy. It wasn't just... I guess what they're saying is 
the magnitude of the punishment, the judgment was majestic, right? Beyond the norm. It wasn't petty. Um, and, and therefore, now this is an amplified Bible. All living beings that move on the earth perish. Birds and cattle, domestic animals, wild animals, all things that swarm and crawl on the earth and all mankind, everything on the dry land, all in whose nostril was the breath and spirit of life died, got destroyed, blotted out, wiped away every living thing that was on the surface of the earth. Man and animals and the crawling things and the birds of the heavens were destroyed from the land. Only Noah and those who were with him in art remain alive. Wow. The word remain um, means to be left or remain, left alone. Right? Uh, the alive actually is implied. It's not in the original text. So when the Bible says, well, only Noah and his family remain, remain what? Alive. But as a poet, I see this as more of, wow, being alone, loneliness. Can you imagine Noah coming out of that boat, realized the humanity have died? <laughs> humanity have died and it's just you and your family wow everything that had breath died pulpit commentary says every living substance was destroyed literally wiped out which was upon the face of the ground both man and literally from man urge cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed wiped out washing by washing from the earth and what only remain alive that they were with him in the ark hmm. i don't know i i would be so lonely <laughs> with that happen. And then it says, the water prevailed upon the earth, increased or raised over the earth for 150 days. The flood happened, the raining, breaking on the water. But on top of that, when that was over, the water still increased on the earth, prevailed, right? Raised over the earth, 150 days. There was not an increase of water, but it completely covered the earth for how many more days? 150 more days. So total of 40 days of rain, 150 days earth under the water, six months and 10 days, roughly. That's 190 days, right? Six months and 10 days, everything under water. So everything died. Well, the question that I raised today is, do you believe in this flood story? Or do you consider it as, well, it's just a whole testament myth. It really didn't happen. It's just old story. And you know, they always talk about, oh, every culture has this flood story because they love to tell this kind of stories. Then you have to wonder, why would every culture have this myth, story about a flood? If every culture there was really connected, I really don't know God had myth about flood. Maybe there's some validity about the flood. Uh, I remember I was studying with my professor who was atheist. His whole thing about, I don't believe in Bible because the mythology, the myth of uh, flood 
uh, is fundamental error. There is a scientific disproof. Why? Because he says there is a slug in Africa that can only travel, you know, uh, one feet a day or something. And his argument was, how could that slug make it into Noah's Ark? It's mathematically impossible. <laughs> so I thought that was so silly. Um, whether it's scientifically proven or not, do you believe that this story happened? Um, I do. And so I try to understand why God would make human and said he was vehemently good. He was, wow, I love that. It's very good, very, very vehemently good. But he repents creating man and exterminate. Wow. And make sure that everything dies by keeping the water 20 feet above the top of the mountain for the next 150 days, six months and 10 days. 190 days. Hmm. Well, something to think about. That's what corruption, remember I told you corruption is self-induced. It's not something that you're forced to be corrupt. Yeah, you're tempted, but corruption happens within. And it takes sinful mind, evil, intent to keep being corrupted when chance to repent seems like 100 years god waits for you you don't repent choose to live in a corrupt lifestyle then the end will come and there will be no mercy there will be complete death i'll make sure i will make sure the sins will be punished. Something to think about. <laughs> so Holy Spirit, God, we would like to repent before you and have mercy. We'll plead to merciful God to have mercy upon us all today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Mm.